Welcome back to Getting Started with OpsWorks for Chef Automate. I'm Nick Rykar, and in this video, I'll walk you through automating compliance, and we can see how you can detect and correct issues in your environments using OpsWorks for Chef Automate. Don't have a Chef Automate server yet? No worries. Check out our last video, where I walk you through the deployment process step by step. In this video, we'll see how we can use Chef Automate's built-in profile store to start finding issues in our environment quickly and preparing our remediations. And with that, let's dive right in. Once we've deployed our Chef Automate server and have a server or VM we'd like to audit, we'll need to take a few steps before initiating our first compliance scan. The first thing we'll need is an inspect profile, which defines the security or compliance standards we'd like to validate as code. You can create your own custom profiles based on your organization's unique requirements, but can also make use of a library of pre-existing profiles available through Chef Automate's Profile Store. We'll start in Chef Automate's Compliance tab, where we can select Profile Store and then Available Profiles. Chef Automate has a variety of profiles available, but in particular, we'll be looking at the CIS security benchmarks. These are standards published by the Center for Internet Security and can be used as generalized security frameworks or as part of formal compliance evaluations for standards like PCI or SOX. The instance I'll be scanning is running Ubuntu 16.04. So in the search bar, I'll type in Ubuntu to see what profiles are available. By clicking the Get button next to Ubuntu 16.04 server benchmarks, I can download that profile to our Automate server so that we can use it in our scans. Because these scans don't require us to pre-install any software on our server, all we'll need to start scanning are valid login credentials. By clicking the Credentials link on the left-hand menu, and then the Add Credentials button, we can define our credential by giving it a name, the username we'd like to connect with, and a password or SSH key. We can then save our credential and create as many credentials as we need to scan our fleet. Finally, by clicking the Scanner link, we can create a node to scan. When clicking Add Nodes, we can define a comma delineated list of nodes we'd like to scan by their IP address or host name. We can then select the credential we created earlier and add our node. Chef Automate will then automatically confirm that it's able to reach our server and will display the detected platform when complete. Now we're ready to create our first scan job. If we click the Create New Job button, we can select the node and profile we created earlier and give our scan job a name. I'm going to call this CIS Scan. We can optionally set a schedule to make sure things keep going quickly during the demo. I'm going to have my scan run every minute. Then we can create our job where we can see it's scheduled to run within a minute's time. If, however, we leave the set schedule box unchecked, our scan will just run at once as soon as it's saved. Once at least one scan has returned, we can go into the reporting view to see how our node fared. And as we can see here, my node is not passing its CIS benchmarks. To learn more about the nature of our failure, we can click on the node to see the full audit details. Here we see every control that our server was evaluated against, as well as which controls passed, and for failing controls, further filters on severity, so that we can separate critical from minor controls. In our system, one failing control is a check for the Telnet client. If we expand this control, we can see the full test results where our system expected the package Telnet was not installed, but indeed it was. From this view, we can also view the control source and see the inspect code that generated our audit. At the core of inspect code are resources, which define the actual evaluations that our audits are going to run. Each inspect resource consists at least of a type, in this case package, a name, in this case Telnet, the package we want to evaluate, and a matcher. This is the condition we are expecting. 
Here, our expectation is that Telnet should not be installed. The same way that InSpec resources define how we evaluate our systems, Chef resources define how we manage them, where Chef resources also contain a type, in this case, the same type, package, and a name, again, the same in this case. And instead of these matchers, Chef resources have actions. Here we want to purge the Telnet package if it exists, or take no action if it doesn't. One of the quickest ways to get started with Chef resources is with a utility called Chef Run, which allows us to apply arbitrary Chef code ad hoc to any system we can connect to over SSH or WinRM. If we wanted to apply our Telnet resource, the Chef Run command would look like so, connecting to our host and applying the package Telnet with the action purge. Now let's try running that command against our server to see if we can't remediate at least one of the issues we detected in our compliance audit. When Chef Run is invoked, it'll package up your resource into an artifact called a policy file, ensure that the Chef client is available on our remote system, and then apply that resource, as we see here. Once Chef Run completes, we can come back to Chef Automate and validate whether we've actually remediated our issue. In our previous run, we had 58 critical controls, and Telnet was still on the list. Let's see how things are looking in our latest scan. Now critical controls are down to 57, and there are no instances of Telnet in the list. Problem solved. Now that we've validated our Telnet control, we can approach remediating the remainder of these controls in much the same way. For each control, we can create Chef code to ensure that the appropriate configuration is put in place. To perform more complex tasks, multiple resources can be packaged into a recipe, which Chef Client can then use to converge each resource in the order specified. In our next video, we'll be taking a look at Chef Cookbooks, which are the artifacts in which these recipes live and which can be uploaded to our OpsWorks for Chef Automate server. We'll see some of the other files and directories that get created in a cookbook and start applying our remediations across our fleet. That's it for part two. To learn more about automating compliance in OpsWorks, check out Amazon's Compliance and Chef Automate documentation. And if you'd like to learn more about InSpec, Learn Chef Rally has you covered with the Compliance Automation Track, where you'll start writing InSpec profiles of your very own. And of course, be sure to join us next time, where we'll be taking a deeper look at automating configuration in OpsWorks for Chef Automate.